Hello everyone, welcome to Forge of Insanity. I'm a commission model painter and I've spent the last five years developing my tips and tricks on ways of painting different models. I hope to provide these tips and tricks to you through many different videos. I also will be providing you with multiple walkthrough videos and paint schemes of different models to help elevate your level of painting as well. Please make sure to click the links below to like and follow. Also, if you want to follow me live, please follow me on Twitch at The Forge of Insanity. And with that, let's get started. Now these are the paints you're going to be needing for this build, so please make sure to write these down. Now we're starting with Brock Gunderson, and he is an awesome model. I have based him in Abaddon Black. The reason for this is because since we're using Cantor Blue as the initial base, along with Retributor Armor, black is an actual great color to start with. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you get all your brushes ready, get all everything set up, your water, your clean palette, and everything, and make sure that your water is clean. You don't want to have a, a dirty pot when you start something like this. So we're going to start out with Cantor Blue, and the Cantor Blue is actually going to be put onto the balloon. Um, and then also on pieces of clothing of Barack Gungrenson. I think that's how you say that. Uh, so what you're going to start with is make sure you water down your Cantor Blue uh, to a nice thin coat. So make sure you're going over all the balloon as you can see here with Cantor Blue. Uh, try and keep it as clean as possible. Uh, Retributed Armor will go over Cantor Blue very nicely because it's a very solid color in and of itself. Uh, but just make sure you're doing your Cantor Blue all over. And once that's done, it should look a lot like this. Make sure to get the back fin as well and all around the back side of the model, as you can see here. You notice I've left off a lot of the engine parts and other things like that. Those will be later covered with Retributor Armor Gold. Now make sure you're going through and touching up anything else you need and also start working on the back fin and the two side fins. At this point right now you should have the back fins done and you should be working on the actual clothing. Now I colored his hat and some pieces of his clothing in Cantor Blue. Uh, you can't really see it very well right now because of the fact that, uh, you know, we have the black base. Now I'm going to start with the Retributor Armor. And for this, I'm going to be using um, a layer or a number two brush uh, to put this on. But uh, just get a little bit out of your pot. You don't have to water this down at all. Uh, Retributor Armor just goes on nice and thick as is. If you water it down, it's going to be more of a glaze than it is actually a solid color. Uh, so please make sure that you're not watering it down. You can even take it directly from the pot, but I like to put it on the palette uh, because that gives me more control on how much paint is actually on my brush. So at this point, I'm taking my number two uh, brush and I'm actually going to start working on all of the pieces that I've left black on the balloon portion. Uh, this will give a nice contrast between the blue and the gold. Oh, blue and gold is always a great contrast. Um, but you want to make sure to move very carefully. Uh, don't overload your brush and uh, start covering everything with Retributor Gold. So as you can see, I've got a nice starting base layer of Retributor Gold. I'm leaving the side hatch of the balloon uh, black so I can go over it with Lead Belcher later. So also, I'm doing half of the balloons on the side. Uh, I'm doing the top half in Retributor Gold, and I'm leaving the black on the bottom half. Um, this leaves a more of a good contrast uh, instead of having just a big gold blob on the side. So as you can see, I've done both of those. I've also done the fins uh, on the top. Uh, it'll also have fins on the side, but I'm saving that for later because I'll be painting the fins a very light color and I want to make sure that I'm not overdoing it. So at this point right now, you should just be touching up on a lot of your Retributor Gold. I'm also painting right behind his head. There's a big 
uh, round piece right behind his head that goes all the way around his head. And I paint that retributor gold as well um, because it gives that nice contrast between the black, the blue, and the retributor gold. I want to make sure that what I'm painting in there uh, it gives a good contrast because or else it's going to be too dark uh, on the inside because I'm leaving the bottom part of the balloon black um, and some of his harnesses as well. So just make sure that you're getting that in there to give a good contrast. So at this point now you should have the gold on the balloon, the blue done, the fins done, and as you can see I put gold Retributor armor on top of the fins as well. Uh, so right now I'm uh, going to be using a little bit of black to touch things up a bit because uh, uh, you know I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. So uh, just going through and touching up a lot of the black in there, and then I'm also using lead belcher to go in and actually start working on all the mechanisms in the back of the balloon. Uh, there's a lot of gears and other things like that. So as you can see, I've done a lot of the gears in the back, and I'm also doing uh, some of the actual uh, arms and things that go up to the front. Uh, I figured that it should all kind of be interconnected. Um, but as you can see, I still left a lot of black in there. I don't want to uh, cover this all in lead belcher because belcher, this is going to be really shiny. Uh, you're going to have a lot of retributor gold and lead belcher, which are both metal-based paints, and you're going to have a lot of shininess to it. Now at this point right now, I'm kind of going over just to make sure to see if I have anything else I'm missing, anything else I want to change uh, from what I got right currently. You can also see that I've painted the cannon underneath Lead Belcher as well. So just make sure you're going through and touching things up. And I'm also doing the boosts as you can see. So on the bottom, I've done all the landing gear and things of that in Lead Belcher. I've also done some of the extra little bits and pieces on the balloon in Lead Belcher as well to get that good contrast. So at this point now, I'm doing Lead Belcher on the weapon system and the sword as well. I want to make sure those are nice and uh, covered in lead belcher. I also will be going over them later with retributor armor to give a nice little contrast there as well. So right now I'm going through and touching up a lot of the uh, different areas that I've had uh, some issues with. All right, so here we're going to start going over the fins, uh, the little leaves of the fins. So we've painted the main part of the fin in Cantor blue. This is Ushopti bone, and I'm going to be using Ushopti bone in all of these little fins that come off the back. Make sure you get a nice watered down consistency. And just start layering away. Make sure to at least get two to three good layers. And as you can see, I painted all the back fin and then little layers of the others. I'm still working on it, but as you can see, it's starting to come out and it's really good, good, good contrast. And I really like it. It's actually come out really nice. So now I'm going over Retributor Gold on the back uh, sort of, I guess you could call it a uh, ball at the base of the back. Um, I really didn't know what to do with that, so I kind of just went over it with a nice retributor armor because there was a lot of uh, darker colors down there and I really wanted to brighten it up. All right, so at this point, your model should look a lot like this, and I'm going through and I'm touching up a lot of the retributor armor, and I'm also putting retributor armor on the elbows of the arms, the mechanical arms. Uh, I thought this would be really cool contrast. Um, it just kind of breaks up the lead belcher. And now I'm kind of going over a lot of the uh, other feet pieces because I did Cantor Blue in some of it, but I don't really want Cantor Blue through the whole thing. So I'm going to paint a lot of retributor armor on the lower armor pieces of uh, 
rock here so he can have a, a lot of good contrast. It is really where you want to keep it even when you're doing your contrast. So I highly recommend these brushes. This is Artist Opus. They are wonderful brushes. I can't sing their praises enough. Uh, they have really good fine tips to them and very sturdy. Uh, definitely more of the expensive brushes, but they're awesome. Uh, so right now we're using Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to go over anything that looks like leather or cloth um, on it. So there should be two, one on either side of the head and then one in front of the face as well uh, that you'll be painting this red, uh, this Sun Scarlet red. All right, so this here, you're going to start just doing a lot of little touch-ups with the red. Make sure to keep it nice and clean. So make sure you're getting everything the way you want it to be. You can go crazy at this point um, and really make this model your own. This is really the base of it, but I'll keep on going into more detail. So right now I'm going to start doing my shading. Uh, right now it's all been base. There hasn't been any shade. So this is Rikar's Flesh Shade. Uh, it's really good with Retributor Armor Gold um, and other flesh tones. Uh, but yeah, for Retributor Armor, this is what you want to use. Now for the Cantor Blue, I'm using Noon Oil. Um, having a nice black shade in there. I'm not going to go crazy with it uh, because I don't want to have a lot of just black all over the blue I just made. Uh, so I want to keep it more toward the recesses and try and keep it uh, away from the main flat areas as much as possible. Uh, there's going to be touch-ups after this as well because, you know, shade just goes crazy. All right, now that you have your shading done, now we're going to go down to layering. You can go back over with another base layer if you want to, but the way this turned out for me, I actually really liked it, so I didn't feel it was necessary. Uh, so we're going to use... Can uh, sorry, Armin Blue uh, on this part. And this is just for the blue, anything that has blue. Um, and so you just want to keep it to the edges. Go slow. Layer uh, Edging is not something you do fast unless you're a pro. Uh, so just take your time. This is where it can get really messy and you can get frustrated because uh, getting perfect lines is very difficult. Um, so just take your time. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Just make sure you go back and just can't kind of put some more Cantor Blue over it. All right, so here, you know, I'm kind of touching up the lighter areas, but I'm really trying to get those lines nice. As you can see, those lines are starting to form nicely uh, around all of the outside of the blue. And that's really what I'm aiming for, is just the outside edges. I'm not really trying to get a lot of interior uh, color. All right, I'm zooming in here because now we're going to start working on the face. Uh, so for this, I'm using Katie and Flesh Tone for a base. And he doesn't have much of a face. I mean, he's got even like a, a socket eye, you know, uh, that has a lens on it. So just try and keep it to the recesses of the face. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to go over it with Hrethgar Flesh Laid to really bring in the recesses and the shadows. Don't go crazy, because, I mean, we kind of want to keep some of that flesh tone apparent. And once this is done, we're going to go over with kids, uh, with Gating Flesh Tone again, um, staying away from the recesses where the Red Karth Flesh Shade is dry, and then go over it with Kids Lead Flesh. So this is uh, more Gating Flesh Tone. And I'm kind of just keeping it to the areas where light's going to catch. I'm trying to stay away from the recesses and keep it nice and clean. And like I said, once this is done, I'll highlight with a little bit of Kids Left Flesh just to catch a little bit more light. But I'm not going to go crazy with it. Make sure to keep it at very thin coats. Not water down like a glaze, but keep it nice. All right, so at this point, your model should look like this. 
And now we're going to start working on the beard. And I'm going to start with uh, a mixture of uh, Zemesi Desert and Liberator Gold. Uh, this is a nice mellow tone. So as you can see, it's a nice melatonin. I'm not, I don't want it as bright as Retribute Armor, but here I'm going over with a little bit of a glaze of Retribute Armor. I'm watered down Retribute Armor so I can get a nice uh, darkness in the recesses, but keep that light on the outside. Because I don't, I don't want this beard to, to uh, kind of like mess with everything else. And now we're going to go through with White Scar. And this is for uh, areas where we want to change the color. So like the eye, uh, the mechanical eye, like what I'm doing right now. Because uh, we're going to put the, a different color on it to make it look like uh, more of a mechanical eye. Uh, and you can go crazy at this point. So if you see any lights, um, anything that looks like a light, uh, you can see... Um, any mechanical pieces that you want to have glow or have a different type of color, um, this is a good time to go over with white scar in those particular zones in order to make uh, it prepared for your other colors. So for the eye, I'm going to be using Bloodletter. You cannot buy this at Citadel Paints anymore, uh, but you can find it online on like eBay. Um, but they're extremely expensive. This is I got this from my original set, so good luck. Uh, but they're like 50 bucks a piece. Uh, you can use all sorts of different colors for this, though. You do not have to use Bloodletter, um, but that's just what I'm using it for. So as you can see, I'm going over the socket eye uh, with this particular... Uh, thing and it's going to take a bunch of layers uh, to make this work. Blood layer is one of those you just have to do multiple layers. So now I'm starting to work on the tubes. I'm not leaving them black. And th this you can go crazy on. Uh, you can use all sorts of different colors. You can use purple, you can use blue, you could use red, you could use yellow. In my case, I'll be using green because that is a huge contrast between everything else. I really want them to stand out. But the first thing I have to do is layer these tubes with White Scar because I'll be using Tesseract Glow on these and White Scar is the best for that uh, if you want it to really, really glow. So make sure you're going over with multiple layers because you're doing white on black. So this could take up to three or four layers uh, just to get that full consistent white um, all the way through these tubes. So make sure to get the inside and outside. All right, now with that done, I've started to put on my Tesseract Glow. And as you can already see, it's already starting to glow. I mean, it's looking really good. It should take about two, possibly three coats uh, to put this on. Um, be careful with it, though, because you don't want it to get into anything else uh, because it will change the color hue of whatever it touches. So just make sure you're covering that. All right, so this is what your model should be looking at about right now. Uh, very clean, very tidy. Uh, you can see I have a lot of black on the back still, and I just left that. All right, so now I'm going back through and touching things up, especially like the eye or anything else I think that just needs a little bit more detail. Um, at this point, you can start going crazy with... Uh, light effects or anything like that that you want and really just make it your own. And I really hope this tutorial helps. Make sure to subscribe and follow. Thank you.